Hello traders and welcome back to another Sunday video. This is actually my first Sunday video in the last three weeks uh, because I've been on vacation, but I am officially back and excited to be taking a look at charts with you guys again uh, for the week ahead, talking about trading setups, things that I'm watching personally. I'll talk about trades that I'm currently in as well as uh, some actions that I've taken on some of my own accounts. So let's go ahead and jump right into this. We'll be covering everything from the US indices. We'll talk a little bit about gold, the dollar index, currencies, we're gonna to touch a little bit on everything here. And I wanted to actually start with uh, looking backwards. Let's talk about the NFP figure that came out last week. So the NFP, the, the jobs numbers themselves, the employment change was really quite strong. Um, but then you had unemployment rate, which actually ticked higher as well. Now, if you think about this just for a second, even if you're a beginner to fundamentals, this makes sense that this is not as positive, right? We went from 3.9% uh, unemployment up to 4%. And so unemployment seems to be on the rise. And one thing that I wanna mention about unemployment when it is on the rise, it typically is a trend that continues. In fact, while we're on the subject of this, I just wanna pull up some visuals to help explain this point. So here is the unemployment claims from the United States. So <clears throat> weekly, every Thursday, we get to see the latest unemployment claims uh, and the number of people you know claiming unemployment. So what I'd like to do here is I just wanna show you this over 180 days. And what you will see here is that there has been just a very steady rise in unemployment claims in the weekly filings. Now on top of that, check this out. Jolts came down pretty substantially. You can see, now this is job openings and job openings are telling a tale right here. So before we get into the charts, this is what we do in every single Sunday video. We talk fundamentals because that is what really drives the market and the reason behind prices going up or down in your favorite charts. But that's not all. If we take a look also at the unemployment rate, remember I mentioned that, uh, oh, the data didn't come in just yet. That's weird. I think that might be an error. But um, my point with going at this is that this actually ticked up to 4%. And my kind of idea here is that overall, if you take a look at you know jobs numbers, yes, that were they were stronger than anticipated, but they revised the previous number down slightly. At the same time, claims are on the rise, uh, job openings are slowing, unemployment rate is rising, and wage growth is uh, again kind of um, staying steady. Now, what does this paint in terms of a picture when we take a look at price action? Well, let's take a quick look at what we saw on Friday. And if we take a look at the indices, there was not too much movement back and forth a little bit they dropped in the morning they rallied back and they ended kind of like this so it was like a you know like almost like an s shape day it was kind of an interesting one but uh that's the indices take a look at the nasdaq take a look at the dow same kind of story uh what didn't like it so much was the russell and remember <clears throat> we talk about this very often but the Russell uh, is more sensitive to interest rates than some of the other bigger indices. And that is because these companies are mostly ginormous ones that have plenty of cash reserves. And if interest rates rise, sure, it's not as good for them because the consumer gets hurt because, you know, again, inflation's on the rise and uh, there's problems that come with it. Borrowing costs are higher. People aren't going out and spending as much. Yes, but uh, they have cash reserves. So they don't need to borrow money themselves so much. But the Russell is comprised of smaller companies. And so this smaller company space needs really for it to really explode higher. A lot of people are saying, when is the Russell going to make its, make its recovery move? When is this big jump going to happen? And my opinion is, and most, most consensus thought is that you need a kind of a perfect scenario. You need growth to be going strong and you need inflation to be under control. And that's not quite what we see right now. With jobs numbers coming in hot, the idea is, well, inflation might actually stay a little stickier for longer. And um, there's also the concept that growth right now uh, could be challenged by this higher interest rates for longer story. We are seeing some evidence of that. Uh, again, if you take a look at some of the other economic data points, 
I mean, check out GDP. GDP numbers came out again lighter than anticipated. This is the the you know kind of the staple for um, growth. And we see PMI data uh, for manufacturing. PMIs came in um, be- a little worse than than forecast. Services was better than forecast, but again, some mixed data there. We're not seeing resounding growth to uh, counteract the inflation that seems to be still sticky. Anyways, let's keep going. I want to also talk about the big one. This is gold. And I actually did pick up a gold long position on Friday. And I, to be honest, might have been a little early with this one. So I, I ended up buying uh, this this pullback into this area here, thinking that we would get some sort of a bounce. I still remain long on gold, even though we had a huge down 3.5% day on Friday. I like the story for gold. It is still on the Edge Finders top setups page. If we go take a look at this really quick, we can pull this up. You can see gold is still getting a bullish reading overall when looking at uh, the statistics overall. Um, you know, we get enough of a bullish reading here, and you'll see that uh, retail sales, uh, I'm sorry, retail sales are positive for gold. You can see inflation statistics. Uh, you know, inflation's still stubborn, but kind of working its way down could let the Fed cut rates at some point. Unemployment rate, um, you know, unemployment rate ticking up to 4% is a positive for gold, even though employment change itself is not a positive for gold. So strong jobs, but unemployment rate also rising. Those things kind of counteract for the price of gold in terms of uh, forecasting, at least in the edge finder's perspective. Remember the edge finder says, the edge finder basically is thinking through this data and it's saying, well, for gold, if these things are poor, give it a positive score. If things are strong for the economy, give it a negative score. So we can see that there's enough here to give us kind of a mostly bullish outlook for gold. Now, that same economic data that is weakening has me bearish on oil. And in fact, I do have a trade open on oil. Let's pull up WTI. I still have this trade open and I've been in this trade for some time. Uh, I, right before I went on vacation, I, I shorted oil and it ended up just completely melting away. Um, huge drop. I mean, this was from from my entry point here. We came down, I mean, almost 9% on the price of oil at one point, which is crazy. I now have my stop loss trailed. So this white line is my stop loss. I've trailed my stop loss just above this level of past resistance on oil. So as long as we don't break up above this 61.8% retracement, I'll stay in the trade. Um, I think we have room to the downside if you do continue to see uh, economic potential slowdown come into the picture. Um, I do think that that is a potential uh, for the remainder of this year. We'll see if that is the case. And to counteract or to, to add on to this idea for me, again, I like the downtrend. The price action looks pretty strong to the downside. I am still short oil. I think it has room to go down. If it doesn't, again, I trail out for a profit, which is not a bad spot to be in. Um, that being said, TLT is one that I'm not so great on right now. TLT, I am uh, back in the red. Um, I'm not logged into my broker right now, but I'll show you. Just hold on one second. Pull it up. So these are my current positions here. So TLT, I am back officially in the red on this trade. Um, I have a thousand shares of TLT, and and you know my thought process on TLT. What what is TLT? TLT is just think bonds. Okay, so I'm long uh, longer duration bonds, like 20 plus year duration bonds. Now, when I'm long bonds, what I ideally want to see is I want to see yields come down. Now, what are yields? Yields are these little guys over here. The 20 year yield specifically is what I would like to see to continue to come down. Now, what are yields? Yields are what are offered on bonds when you purchase them from the the US Treasury. So if I go out and I buy a 20 year bond right now, uh, that means every year I'll collect 4.65%, let's call it, uh, basically risk-free money. Right, so that's what yields are, and and I think that yields have the potential to come down because yields typically decline when the economy starts to slow and inflation expectations decline as well. So I think that those things could happen this year. I think that you know again when I look at a lot of the 
the data that we have talked about, I think that they're pointing in the direction of some, some more slowdown is on the way. Again, the big one being that GDP number that we talked about earlier. So I like this story. Also, by the way, guys, if you don't already have a copy of the Edge Finder, you can pick up a copy down below in the description. There's also a discount available for you. If you use code YTVIP with the link in the description down below, you get a nice discount off the product. If you don't have a copy, this is a great chance to get one for a nice uh, discounted rate and uh, support my channel. If you like this this tool that I'm using, this is called the Edge Finder. My company, A1 Trading, we build tools for traders. We're about a 10 team strong uh, or a 10 people strong team uh, in Atlanta, Georgia, and we build this stuff day in, day out. And we also have, of course, like a team of, uh, you know, the content editors behind these videos and uh, stuff like that. So if you, if you uh, have thought about getting a copy in the past, let me just show you. You get access to the top setups page, you get access to the Edge Finder indicator page, our data scanner pages where you can just go through tons of different market data points, seasonality readings, economic data, labor market data, inflation data, interest rates, price forecasts, all sorts of stuff. Um, and for my friends who are already Edge Finder users, I just want to direct your attention to something kind of new that we've done recently. There's two different things. Number one, please leave us feedback. We would actually uh, really appreciate this. We read every single uh, note that comes through from our existing you know, Edge Finder users. We want to improve this tool for you. It is our number one priority to make the tool better uh, and, and make it you know, more useful every single day, both for my own trading, but also for uh, our customers who are using the tool themselves. So please leave us feedback if you have not already. It, it takes just a few minutes to fill out that form and let us know what you think we could improve or what features you use the most. Again, it'd be very useful to us. At the same time, uh, we do live streams throughout the week. If you are an Edge Finder user, head over to live stream schedule and uh, you can now check out this, uh, this live stream lineup. These are being generated by our team. Um, the, the producers behind the live stream are setting up shows and putting this out here. You can click the link, watch whenever it's live. Uh, just wanted to show you that as I find that to be very useful. We use this in, in person or in team, you know, our own team uses this to coordinate, uh, stuff and what the shows are going to look like. So, uh, we just figured we'd make it public so that other, uh, people who are fans of the show can tune in. And then finally, we added this little help section. If you want to set up a call with a sales rep, if you'd like to ask a technical question, Edge Finder tutorials, all of these things are available to uh, to existing Edge Finder users. And um, if you're not an existing Edge Finder user, again, you can find information to purchase down below in the description. You can also find uh, information on our website, a1trading.com. Okay, so let's keep pushing on here. Um, I want to talk a little bit about the dollar for a moment. So the dollar bounced real strong on these NFP numbers, but we have to ex expect something around the corner here. This week is actually massive. Um, uh, in fact, let's let's pull this up. This is it's such a big week. I just want to talk about this for a second. So what you have is let's go this week. This week um, on Wednesday. Wednesday is really the big day. But we also for for traders who are watching the euro or the pound. Uh, we have parliamentary uh, elections. We have claimant count change. We have GDP numbers for the UK, so the pound is probably going to be volatile this week. Um, I could say that much. If you take a look at the Wednesday reports, oh my goodness, you have CPI for the US followed by a press conference, and uh, this is going to be a hotly, hotly anticipated press conference and CPI report. As people are now wondering, you know, you've started to see some slowdown in the economic data in the US. But inflation hasn't, you know, materially come down. It has come down a little bit, but it hasn't come down massively. The question is, is this inflation going to come out cool? But then also on top of that, um, is the Fed going to be satisfied and start to talk about cutting rates again? That's that's the big question, because if you get cuts for rates, USD goes down, TLT goes up, because remember, yields would come down, um, gold would go up you know, stocks would go up as well. Um, so it is all a question about that if that happens this week. And again, if the opposite happens, guys, you get all of those things reversed, right? If you see, uh, let's say, a hot inflation print or a Fed um, that is not very uh, happy with, with the results that have been happening in the inflation fight, what you could see is the dollar strengthen TLT, gold, stocks go down 
in uh, tandem with this. So it's going to be a huge week. I think we, we really need to pay attention to Wednesday and what happens there. Also, the producer price index on Thursday, also very important to the markets. So should be a action-packed week to say the least, and we'll be live streaming. Again, I mentioned this earlier, but you can already see we will have live streams set up for those big events, especially on June 12th. That is going to be the big uh, FOMC and CPI day. We're going to be, if you check back in, this will be full of slots of, of uh, traders coming on and, and guest hosting because we will be going live probably all day long. So stay tuned for that. I wanted to check in on seasonality as well. So month of the year, you know, here's the thing about the S&P right now. We're in a seasonally very strong time of year. Um the summer months, May, June, July, August, very strong period of time in the year. I'd also like to take a look at gold here. Let's see if we can do that. Pull up gold. Yeah, so gold also expected to be slightly positive this month, uh, flat next month, positive in August, and then you have a little bit of a downturn in September and October, et cetera, et cetera. But a lot of the gains for gold, I think, for this year, to be honest, might be behind us. I don't think we're going to see the same massive, like, what was it, like 20% gains on gold go take a look at gold really quick. I mean, you saw just massive, massive returns for gold. Uh, it doesn't move all that much in terms of a percentage point, um, which I know may come as a surprise, but it, it really doesn't move percentage wise. So the, this far, you know, this much uh, so far this year, it's up 11 and half percent. At one point it was up 19% peak, 19% or so. So you can see that it does, uh, you know, it does not move nearly as much as perhaps other more volatile assets. Speaking of volatile assets, here's silver. I mean, silver this year, if anything, is the is the you know winner. Take a look at this. So let's call this move from peak to trough. 43% almost. I mean, that was a huge move on silver. Now we're seeing a little bit of a violent pullback. I actually think you may see some bounce here. Um, I like the metals. I like them long. And I think that, you know, you had the news here. Why did gold really drop so hard? And a uh, big reason for that is because at least the headline is that um, China has, has slowed down on their buying of gold. Uh, central bank in China, right? The PBOE, I think, or no, the uh, PBOC, People's Bank of China, um, the slowdown in purchasing from gold uh, in, in the gold reserves side of things is not particularly attractive for gold prices because, again, this idea was a lot of uh, Chinese uh, and foreign central bank purchases were helping to drive the price higher. But I don't think that it's time to just bail on the story just yet. I don't think that's the only reason that gold was going up. I think that there's also, you know, the the un unexpected, um, you know, what's going to happen with the U.S. economy. If if there if there is doubts, then gold may actually look like a more attractive alternative uh, to just being long stocks or, or you know, having too much money in, in the dollar, right? So I think it's been a, an alternative. And, and I think that that story could continue even if China pauses on buying for now. So um, I still like the story long for gold. I will stop out and be completely admitting it that I was wrong about this idea if we break through support here. So I want to make something clear. A lot of times you will hear, you know, traders and, and you know, people on social media super adamant about, uh, you know, a particular stock or, or gold or Bitcoin or something like that. Um, and while I have moments where I'm very bullish or bearish on certain things, I'm not, you know, perma anything. So when it comes to gold, I do like the idea of staying long gold, but I will say, hey, I was completely wrong if it breaks support at 2300 here convincingly down into like the 2260s you know if that happens then i just have to say okay i'm i was wrong about my entry and the trade didn't work out so please understand a lot of times traders um you know when they when they make a big claim a lot of people will be like but you said it was going to go up nobody nobody knows what the market is going to do with certainty next right um unless you are you know nancy pelosi and you have all the information right i don't know uh, hands are tied on that one. But but for me, and for 99.9% uh, .9 of us, we don't have insider information. We don't know what's going to happen next in the markets. We are simply weighing the odds, weighing the probabilities of what could happen, and managing risk appropriately. So if price breaks through this level, again, I will be taking a stop loss on this. 
when it comes to my oil position, as I mentioned, my other trade, um, I will trail stops or my stop is trailed. So if price breaks through this, I'll take a profit. I also have a couple positions that I just wanted to really quickly highlight uh, on my options side of things. So we take a look here. I'm long the S&P 500 and the technology ETF XLK. Uh, I have actually sold covered calls against my own position. What that means is that you have the position long. So I have 400 shares of VOO, I have 1,000 shares of XLK, um, but then I've gone and sold calls against my position. So if you sell a call, right, you get paid a premium to sell that call. I'm selling someone else the right to buy a bunch of shares at a certain price. And so um, I'm, I'm taking the other side of their, their trade. In return, I get paid a premium. Um, so I, I got paid $6 on this uh, VOO call. And it was pretty near the money when I sold it. So uh, if the market rolls over, which I think it could, and this is kind of my, my going back to this, you know, economic data slowing. Um, I, I just don't love the story for being super, super bullish stocks right now. Um, now, if it gives me a pullback, I may look at it a little differently, but I just I just think that in terms of where I want to be with slowing economic data, I'd prefer, at least right now, to be long gold and to be long TLT, and I could be very wrong about that. But in terms of like the NASDAQ and S&P 500, I think that the upside is limited from here for now. Um, if something changes, of course, I may change my tone as well. But right now, the upside for me on the indices, I, I just don't see a huge, you know, you had great growth in, in strong company earnings. Yes, that's a lot behind us. You saw some cooling in inflation, but inflation has a long way to go and economic data is starting to cool. Uh, that could impact earnings. I just don't see massive 20% upside for the rest of the year up, you know, returns at least right now. Now, if you get a pullback, if you get, you know, a 10% correction or a, <clears throat> you know, 5%, 8% correction, then the risk to reward becomes a little bit more attractive for me. So I'm watching this. <clears throat> I'm seeing how this plays out. And uh, of course, you know, for now I've sold calls against my position. I'll collect a premium in the meantime. And if the market just rips higher, then I get taken out of my positions and I still collect that premium. So um, <clears throat> as well as, as well as, you know, pretty significant profits on these positions that I have, I'm floating, you know, um, 15 and, and $12,000 respectively on each one. So these are, have been really, really great trades to me, but I am just now kind of saying, you know, I think that the upside is a bit limited from here. If I'm wrong, again, the worst case scenario is that if I'm wrong in this semi, you know, kind of hedged position and the market rips higher, then I just don't enjoy all of the gains here, but I just take profits and uh, that'll be that. That's essentially what happens if, if the market keeps going up. If the market goes down, I collect, pr I still collect the premium no matter what, and it cushions the drawdown on the positions that I have currently. So I am bullish overall, but minimum, uh, you know, or, or kind of more of a hedged position, more of a, um, a pause on, on being super bullish up at these levels. So I sold calls after this big spike up on this day, I sold calls against my XLK and my VOO position. So we will see uh, what the indices do next. I know Frank in the office, he also feels kind of similar. We were talking about this actually last night, we were out for a drink and just talking a little bit about, um, you know, slowing economic data, inflation's still kind of stubborn. Um, the upside for stocks right now just seem a little bit uh, wob wobbly. So again, that's my thoughts on everything, guys. Uh, also, I do want to mention that if you're looking for a new brokerage, you can trade with the one that I use, or you can use one of the other great ones listed down below in the description. There are several great sign-up perks available to you. If you made it to the end of this video, again, and if you have not checked them out already, all of the brokers that are linked down below, I've got, you know, kind of one-on-one -on -one relationships with. So, you know, whether it be Oanda or Webull or ACAP, there are some special sign-up perks available to any of those, whether you're in the U.S. or not in the U.S. So please take a second. Again, this is free money. Why not do it? There's free, free game down below in the description to sign up for a brokerage. And again, remember, if you want to join our VIP group or join the Edge Finder, both of those are available down below in the description. Have a great, uh, great week ahead, guys. Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you next time.